comfortable with what you're doing. So. Good afternoon. Please be seated. The next matter in our hearing is the matter of Nestle Waters North America versus the town of Freiburg et al. Uh, council, those of you who will be orally arguing, I'm going to ask you to step together up to the microphone. Give us your name and the party you'll be representing so that we can start the lecture. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Catherine Connors for Appalachian Nestle Waters North America, Inc., DBA, Poland Spring Bottling Company. Thank you, Ms. Connors. Good afternoon, Scott Anderson for Appley Cross Appellant, Western Maine Residence for Rural Living. John Wall on behalf of Town of Freiburg. Thank you, Mr. Wall. And with that, Ms. Connors, you may proceed. And may it please the court. We are here yet again on the same matter. Poland Springs proposed spring site in Denmark, Maine. Now, because this project is heavily regulated, it requires three basic permits. One from the state, one from the town of Denmark, and because the water from Denmark is being piped across the town border, a land use approval from the town of Freiburg. In each instance, the administrative body approved the permit. In each instance, plaintiff's counsel's clients have appealed. You affirmed Denmark's approval in 2007, and you approved the state, affirmed the state permit last year. So we are down to the Freiburg permit. Because the only activity that is going on in Freiburg is transportation of the water, there are no issues in this appeal relevant to water extraction. This is a case where neighbors are opposing a project based primarily on traffic. The twist in this appeal is that Poland Spring is the appellant even though it met every ordinance criteria. The Freiburg Planning Board found that Poland Spring met every criteria in the Freiburg Ordinance. The Superior Court agreed, and it said that there was substantial evidence for every finding, for every criteria under the ordinance. But the Superior Court then created an additional criterion based outside the ordinance on language in a one-page excerpt from the comprehensive plan. Because no one had seen this criterion before, there had to be a remand, and the new planning board, after voicing, uh, understandably, confusion as to the meaning of this new criterion, because it wasn't in the ordinance, ultimately said the criterion wasn't met. So the primary issue before you today is whether that criterion exists, whether Poland Spring had to meet a, a low impact criterion contained in the comprehensive plan. Because the answer to this question is no, uh, the Superior Court cannot create a new substantive criterion based on language in the comprehensive plan. Poland Spring should prevail here, and because this result is fairly obvious, the appellees do their best in their briefs to avoid and obscure that this is the issue before the court. But in the end, this is a straightforward appeal. There is no low impact criteria. Here we're a step away from that because we're not even talking about purpose language in an ordinance. We are talking about purpose language in a comprehensive plan. Ms. Connors, to your right, how do you distinguish the facts in this case or the record in this case from the Agunquit sewer case? Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, in what it's the, in, the, in that case, the court rejected the argument that the town had erred in referring to the comprehensive plan in determining the issue on whether a sewage plan conformed to the land use ordinance. I, that, that was dealing with a case that had to do with consistency with a comprehensive plan where the ordinances and the, or the statutes explicitly require consistency. Section 14, for non-intensive use, as compared to the language of the, uh, the plan, which refers to low impact, are, are those the same thing? Do they overlap at all? I would like this to look like the, uh, it is reinstating the decision of the planning board originally approving it. The Superior Court also found that the unreasonable interference of the planning board was supported by the record. Yes. And yet, it went on to say 50, 
50 trucks per day in and out of the facility is not, does not appear to be non-intensive use. It didn't connect that to the unreasonable interference provisions. Well, it in order to figure out whether the trucking facility complied with Section 5D, the planning board said in its initial decision, we're going to look at the Section 14 language that talks about the type of uses that are allowed in the rural residential district. We're also going to look at the comprehensive plan, because both of these sources discuss the types of commercial uses that are allowed in the rural residential district. So the comprehensive plan has been part of this process from the very first decision that was issued because we're trying to figure out whether a proposed trucking facility that's not on the list of land uses is similar to those land uses that are permitted. So the planning board, in trying to determine whether or not this was compatible, said, we've looked at the comp plan, it talks about natural resource-based use, and that this use was a natural resource-based use because it involved water. This entire case is about Section 5D of the ordinance and whether or not this trucking facility meets those requirements. If I'm a landowner in Freiburg and I want to do something with my land, I then have to know by heart not only the land use ordinance but the 125 pages of the comprehensive plan. Because this, is, again, is an omitted use. The trucking facility, this 24-hour day, 365-day trucking I facility. I bet you that uh, Nestle's could find a page supporting economic development, too. But, but here, what, what's happening is they're trying to shoehorn a use that isn't in the, the land use table and get the planning board to determine that it's a oh. permitted use. Look, if it's like anything, it's like processing of goods, which is a prohibited use. And I, I think this goes back to the relevance of the comprehensive plan. This is a use that the voters have never said, you know what, we think a 24-hour-a-day trucking facility in the rural residential district where you have home-based business, low-impact business, is a type of use that we want in the town of Freiburg. And this is where I think I disagree with your assessment. The court then said there has to be a determination with regard to uh, compliance with low impact. Why, why is that not the judge in grafting comprehensive plan on the ordinance? If you look at the comprehensive plan language, it talks about three categories, natural resource, home base, and low impact. I think what Justice Cole was saying is it's not natural resource. No one, argue, no one is arguing it's home base. And therefore, the one thing for the planning board to look at, to the extent you have decided the comp plan is important, is the low impact, uh, low impact criteria. I would say that it is applicable in this instance because the ordinance specifically in grafting that provision when it states that all the requirements of the district involved must be considered in terms of determining whether or not this use which is not specifically listed is compatible. So, that, so the ordinance in, includes by reference and by man, and, and mandates findings on what is called implementation strategy? I get the the board can apply can I get an and say yes. The comprehensive sure. plan the same way as I can get an amendment of the ordinance in the town of Freiburg? No, Your Honor. That's, that's obviously not the case. But Why not? Well, when you're dealing with a situation with an ordinance, it obviously is under a different set of statutes than amendment of the comprehensive plan. Isn't this a dangerous precedent for a town, Freiburg and any other town, to say all of a sudden now you have to look at the comprehensive plan as well as the ordinance? You're going to put the town in jeopardy and applicants in jeopardy. Nobody will know the rules. 5D applies across the board, omitted uses for, for any district, and it makes sense that that sentence would have to say that the uh, requirements of that district, referring you back to, in this case, Section 14, uh, there's no express reference or incorporation, or as I said earlier, hooking in of the comprehensive plan. How do we make that jump? If the statute involved in that case referred to um, uh, any adopted municipal plans and ordinances regulating land use. Mr. Wallace, did you say the word plans? Sorry? Did you say plans in that sentence? Yes, there, there, yeah. plans is referred to in the statute. The board did not err as a matter of law in categorizing the loadout facility as an omitted use. So he upheld the conclusion that this was an omitted use. I would also note that this, is, uh, this ordinance is different from ordinances in some other towns where if a use is not specifically listed in other towns, it, it's can be prohibitive. If it's not listed, you can't do it. This, that's the default. In this case, the Freiburg Ordinance, enacted by the people of Freiburg, says if it's not listed, it's omitted. And it's allowed if you have these additional conditions that you must meet. But if we accept Mr. Anderson's uh, postulation that the court was just slightly inarticulate in its language, what it was saying was this is an omitted use, 
yes, you should look to the history, including the, the comprehensive plan, but you mistook what this was. It is not, in fact, based on natural resources. It is, and it's certainly not a home use, so it has to be a low impact uh, activity. Go back and look at this again. And if that's what the court was saying, would that have been wrong? The question is whether this omitted use is actually acceptable under the ordinance. It's not an ordinance criteria we're looking at. It's whether this is an acceptable use under this ordinance where there is a catch-all phrase for admitted uses. And they looked at it under what the court considered was the wrong provision of omitted uses. Why is that so wrong? If it is not prohibited, it is, it is allowed unless it, it does not meet one of the four criteria.